Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video has been sponsored by NetEase, and if you're concerned as to what that means in regards to my content, then check out the link for my Discord in the description below, where I have put out a public statement about this. Now, on the subject of Discord, you should totally come join that one anyway, because it's full of like-minded individuals who love internet spaceship games on mobile, and would love to chat to you about Infinite Lagrange. Do also check out, of course, the official Infinite Lagrange Discord, full of some excellent players who will give you all the tips and tricks you need on things like fleet composition, which ships they think are best, and so on and so forth. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Infinite Lagrange, and, well, you know the rest by now. Check out the description for more information. In today's video, we're going to be talking about tactical ships, sometimes referred to as support or even logistics vessels. We're going to be talking about what these are and what they do and how you can use them to bolster your fleet. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into that. We're going to jump into the blueprint menu here and have a look at our ship blueprints. Now, the three most common of these, unfortunately, are not part of your generic ships. You're not going to get these as standard. Um, it may be a while before you get them. You might get them in your first box. The three that I know of and want to talk about today are the Tundra, the Guardian, and one of the series variants. Now, you'll see that I have the series Aircraft Destroyer. I do not have the support one just yet. So we're not going to touch on this too much in this video, just to mention that, well, it's here, and it's basically the same type of ship, just with a different hull made by a different one of the shipbuilders. So today, then, we're going to have a look at the Tundra and the Guardian. So what are tactical support or logistics vessels, depending on how you want to talk about them? Essentially, they are the healers in your fleet. They are here to repair your other vessels in the middle of combat. And thus, though they themselves don't do much in the way of combat damage, they help keep the other ships alive that are doing damage and thus the difference between having a fleet with or without these can be monstrous. Ships that normally wouldn't be able to take out an enemy fleet larger than their size are now capable of doing so simply because the, the ships aren't dying because they're being repaired as they go. It's like playing any MMO and having a healer in the group. Without the healer you just need to kill everything before it kills you. Having the healer alive means that you can keep going a lot longer and you can outlast your opponents a lot easier. Anyway, let's start by having a look at the Tundra, which is referred to as a tactical destroyer. If we have a look here at the combat roles for this particular ship, this is one of the Noma shipping group's ships. Um, I do like the way it's designed, it's nice and chunky as well. Anyway, we have a look at its roles here, you'll see it has back row, maintenance, anti-aircraft, and UAV. And most of these we've seen before, but worth remembering and just, you know, going over. Back row, of course, means that when this is in your fleet, it's in the back row and thus usually one of the last ships for target priority. The anti-aircraft means this particular ship's weapons are designed to take out other aircraft. Now, UAV is a bit of a, a new one for us, and as you can see in the description here, it refers to the Tundra as a destroyer equipped with the Tundra multi-role UAV system. It's able to launch two squadrons of anti-aircraft UAVs and one squadron of repair UAVs. UAVs is an unmanned aircraft vehicle, basically. Um, it's essentially a drone that is going to fly around, and in the case of the Tundra here, it's going to both serve anti-aircraft roles, defending you against other enemy aircraft, whilst also repairing other ships, and that's what the maintenance roll down here means. And if we actually have a look at the Tundra UAV system, we can go into its bonuses here and see there's not really much happens here. It just says carries two standard defensive UAVs and is tasked with housing and maintaining military UAVs. It's also equipped with a signal guidance system. And if we have a look at its enhancements, you'll notice that we get things like the emergency repair strategy, when the ship's HP falls to 20%, all onboard UAVs perform self-repair for 40 seconds, which can only trigger once per battle. This is actually really quite useful for a ship like this. It means in the, in the event that this is targeted and something starts hitting the back row and taking your Tundras out, once it hits 20%, they start to hit emergency repairs on themselves. It's sometimes enough just to help them outlast a bit of damage whilst your other ships take out whatever's shooting at them but it's one of those you can see I haven't really started to aim for it here I've been going for other things 
Now you have things like UAV repair effectiveness, um, increasing by up to 10% there. Um, we've got things like return to battle cooldown of the UAVs by 4%, obviously going up per level as well to a full 20% of training. Increases the damage of the anti-aircraft um, UAVs there. As far as I can tell, these do not increase the healing output of the repair UAVs, only the combat potential of the anti-aircraft ones. Again, we've got return to battle cooldown and the hit rate. Now again, hit rate, is one of those I can't seem to tr like figure this out. I don't know if hit rate helps you to lock on to uh, friendly ships for repair faster. It didn't seem to. So if you're looking at using the Tundra purely as a healer, the best things to go for are the UAV repair effectiveness and the return to battle cooldown so that those UAVs keep coming a lot faster than they would otherwise. Now, of course, you can upgrade other parts of the Tundra as well. It does have its rapid-fire battery system, which you can see here is basically what it uses to fight corvettes and fighters um, and then take out destroyers and frigates if there's nothing else around. But for me, I tend to find that there are other ships in the fleet that are already doing anti-aircraft, anti-ship, uh, anti-destroyer and anti-frigate better than the Tundra already is, so I just tend to pump these straight into um, repairing with the UAVs. That's how I would choose to enhance them. Now the second one to look at then is the Guardian, which is the Antonius Consortium variant of uh, Support Destroyer. Because this one's referred to as a, a Support Destroyer rather than a Tactical. They're sometimes referred to as Tactical, sometimes as Support. Um, you're looking for those maintenance roles. So if I open up here um, the Guardian Support Destroyer, you'll see it's equipped with the Storm Integrated Missile System to provide anti-aircraft and anti-missile support. Has two support UAV pods, enabling it to launch one squadron of repair UAVs and another squadron of anti-aircraft. UAVs in battle. It doesn't actually show maintenance here in the roll bonus, but I do assure you it can do so. We've got a middle row um, ship this time, so it's going to be targeted a little bit easier than perhaps the Tundra would have been. It's still anti-aircraft and it still has UAV. Now, you'll know, if you know me at all, you'll know that the Anto Antonius Consortium are some of my favourite ships, and the Guardian definitely, you know, sort of goes up with that. I love my Reliat, I love my um, my Winged Hussar, and I love the Guardian, and having a fleet that is just those three ships alongside the Carillion Recon as a tank, and the Carillion Heavy Cannon uh, for some really surprising anti-cruiser damage. Um, I have a consortium fleet that is entirely those and does really, really well in the early game. And actually, I've had people attack me with cruiser fleets and they've lost to that fleet of frigates and destroyers because of the Guardians keeping them alive, because of the Carillion heavy cannons blasting things away and far above the, what people expect, and the Carillion recons tanking most of the other damage. It's an interesting fleet setup. Anyway, here we have a couple of different parts that are worth mentioning here. We've got the CRT-3 Field Support UAV pod. Again, you can see if we manage to actually open this, one repair UAV uh, squad, um, and it gets the anti-aircraft ones as well. You'll notice it has fewer UAVs than the Tundra, but that's because it's got missiles and that that are doing more damage from the ship directly. This, uh, whereas the Tundra is heavily reliant on its UAVs with a little bit of support from sort of a cannon. Here, the Guardian is a little less Less reliant on its UAVs. You can see you've got the repair UAV, uh, the field support UAV, and the anti-aircraft uh, anti UAV pods there. And it does a lot of missile damage as well, which works really well, surprisingly, against things like Corvettes and that. Now, again, if we have a look at the bonuses, we have that emergency repair enhancement, a lot cheaper this time around at 12. When the ship's HP falls to 20%, all onboard UAVs perform self-repair for 40 seconds. I've not really needed it. As you can see here, I've just gone for straight return to battle cooldown of the aircraft and UAVs, and the lock-on speed and hit rate, again, I don't really see the point of it so much, because you're not the UAVs aren't doing all that much. If you want to go for hit rate um, and target lock on speed if you're looking to do the actual anti-aircraft side of things then upgrade the guardian's missiles not its uavs for the healing and repair side though yeah that return to battle cooldown there of 60 percent increase so those uavs once they're done doing what they do they come back to the ship and they're out there 60 percent faster really really helps and i love the guardian you can see there with how many enhancement points i've pumped into it 
We also, however, have the situal, uh, situational awareness system, um, which is a really useful thing as well. It's worth noting, just because this allows you to reduce the chance of being hit by missiles by 20% and reduce the chances of being hit by direct fire weapons by 15%. Remember that the Guardian is a mid-row ship, which means if you have no destroyers in the front row, these are going to be taking damage early on. And even if you have destroyers in the front row, they're still going to be taking hits fairly early on into battle. So for me, having something that made them that little bit harder to hit worked it has worked wonders and it means they take a lot less damage than you might otherwise anticipate again for the jupiter industries we do eventually have the series aircraft destroyer having a support type i've not unlocked it yet this is one of the ones i'm looking forward to most unlocking because i want to get out there and start using this again you can see here though back row like the tundra maintenance like the tundra and uav Interestingly, the description here is that it has two defensive UAVs and one support UAV. Um, during combat, UAVs can be dispatched to reinforce anti-aircraft defense and repair friendly ships, only equipped with a basic defensive battery. It's kind of like the Tundra. It relies on the UAV system a lot more than it does on some of the other, on, on its mainline weaponry, whereas the Guardian has pretty good mainline firepower as well. In fact, if we have a look at the Tundra, you'll see pretty much unupgraded, we've got 2250 on the, uh, on straight up anti-ship, and 4470 on our anti-aircraft, whereas the Guardian, a lot higher on 4049 anti-ship, and 6196 on its uh, anti-aircraft. It, as I said, ultimately the Guardian's not quite as good a healer as the Tundra or the uh, the series, but it does a lot more damage um, on the sidelines there, and so you can use it in conjunction with other uh, ships as well to kind of do that. If you're looking for a straight-up healer, the Tundra or the series, I think, arguably are going to be better. I just like the Guardian for being sort of a midline all-rounder, um, and again, I like to run themed fleets, so having an entirely Antonius Consortium fleet with Guardians in it works absolute wonders for me. Um, surprisingly effective, and I should probably do a video talking about those fleets at some point as well. But for now, those are the three ships that I wanted to talk about today. Perhaps once I unlock the series support type, I might come back and talk about that a bit more in depth. But if you're looking for healers, those are the ships that you want to try and unlock. And the advantage of the Tundra and the Guardian over the series is that the first time you get that blueprint, it is the healer. Whereas the series, you need to get the actual aircraft destroyer. And then, as you can see, I still need to upgrade and un you know, I need to find the blueprint again enough times to unlock it as the actual support type there, but I'm still very excited to one day eventually get that ship. Anyway, things have been absolutely grueling here on Lyra123. It is a phase two server. Things have been brutal. Our alliance has been battered repeatedly, but we're still here. We're still going strong and we're coming towards the end of this server. So hopefully soon I'll be talking to you all about phase three servers and showcasing how to best start in those and just all the craziness that's going to happen there. I'm, I'm scared. I'm genuinely scared. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Do you use any of the tactical support or logistics uh, ships are you fans of them do you, which ones do you prefer let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below otherwise happy sailing and see you in infinite lagrange